This is the OnePlus Nord 2 T5G disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Next, we need to use a hairdryer or a heat gun to apply heat to the back plate to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. The adhesive on this back plate is extremely strong, so it'll take you some time to pry it off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. Now there are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Next there's a metal cover over the connector which needs to be removed. Now the flex cable for the LED flash and light sensor can be disconnected. And then the top cover can be lifted up and removed. There are some antenna lines drawn on this plastic cover which has light gray color lines. The NFC antenna is located in the center. There's some graphite film to help transfer heat. And again this flex cable is for the dual LED flash and the light sensor. Here's a look at the other side. Now the battery cable needs to be disconnected. And then we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There are two coaxial cables on the right side of the board that need to be disconnected by popping them off. There's also some graphite film over the earpiece speaker and the front facing camera connector which needs to be peeled off so we can disconnect and remove that front facing camera. Here's a better look at the 32 megapixel front facing camera. There's a single Phillips screw on the top left side of the board which is holding it down that needs to be removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. On the main board there's a 50 megapixel primary camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel mono lens. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. The main camera is the only camera with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner a liquid damage indicator which is white sticker, and some graphite film over the front shields. There's also a rubber gasket around this connector. Once the graphite film and copper tape are peeled off, we can see a thermal pad over these chips and some thermal paste over these. There's more graphite film and copper tape on the back shields as well as some thermal paste. Once that graphite film and copper tape are peeled back, there are thermal pads over these chips and over the ROM or storage, as well as some thermal paste over the RAM and processor and this chip. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. Now the graphite film on the bottom needs to be peeled off. And then the cover over the subboard can be lifted up and removed. At this point, these four flex cables as well as the screen flex cable need to be disconnected from the subboard. There's a single Phillips screw holding down the subboard that needs to be removed. And then the subboard can be lifted up, but be careful since the black coaxial cable is still attached underneath. There are rubber gaskets around the connectors, and the primary microphone is located right here. The SIM reader is located on the back. So if you need to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate. The screws on the bottom cover and remove that cover, as well as disconnect the flex cables and remove the subboard, giving you access to the screen cable. You'd remove that red rubber gasket, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame, and reassemble the phone. Now the speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at the speaker assembly, and there's a mesh filter over the opening. To remove the battery, there are pull tabs provided on either side of the battery to help you pry it off.
Here's a better look at the dual cell battery, with each cell consisting of 2250 mAh. Once the battery is removed and the battery adhesive pouch is peeled off, we can see the flex cable for the charger port and this flex cable which connects the main board to the sub board. To remove the charger port, we're going to have to disconnect this coaxial cable and peel off this flex cable. And then we can lift up and peel off the flex cable for the charger port. Here is a better look at the charger port. And there's a red rubber gasket around it. Once this flex cable is peeled back, we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber, which runs underneath the battery and the motherboard. Moving on, the fingerprint reader is located here and it's held down with some adhesive, so if you want to replace that, you'd have to just gently pry it off. Next to that is the x-axis haptic feedback motor, and that's also held down with some adhesive. This flex cable leads to a small board over here, which is an antenna board. The flex cable for the power button is located on this side and is held down with some adhesive, and the same goes for the flex cable on the other side for the volume keys. If you need to replace those, you'd have to just gently pry the flex cables off and pull out the plastic brackets from inside the frame. The proximity sensor board is located on top, and the earpiece speaker is located right next to it, and that's also held down with some adhesive. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 4.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.